Hey everybody, welcome back. So Northern Land plays The Binding of Isaac after Earth Plus. We did pretty well in the last episode. Talked a lot of smack about things we didn't understand at all. Oh good. Terrible stats and terrible items. M-M-O-P-N-X-A-H. At least we had a Balls of Steel. Um, you, you might think I'm being dramatic, but we have, you know, a rate of fire that is horrible. 16 is like... So Victor and I were talking about it. I don't mean to sound like the world's biggest wah wah baby, but like, I really feel like for Eden, it it would help out a lot. I wonder if we could just maybe a diagonal shot. No, um, it would help out a lot. Like 2.63 damage is pretty bad. Apparently, the Eden damage range is uh, between 2.5 and 4.5. That, in and of itself, is not horrible, until you consider the fact that, um... You know, you could also have... The, the tier range seems to be like... I don't know, maybe like 9 to 20? <laughs> so your your DPS can be like pretty abysmal. Uh, and, you know, in, in principle... That was just uh, not handled very well right there. In principle... Um... It doesn't seem that bad, right? Like, 2.5 to 4.5. But I really, and I don't, I don't know if this is true. You know, when I was looking at the wiki, I couldn't I couldn't find anything to support this hypothesis. So there's a chance that you're just witnessing, like, the effects of uh, observer bias. Where you're, you're way more cognizant of runs that start with bad damage than you are of runs that start with good damage. But I really, really feel like, uh, historically with Eden, I get way more starts that are below 3 damage, then I get uh, starts that are above 4. Which is something that should be the same uh, percentage chance to happen in base stats. And if anything, it actually should be uh, more likely that you get a higher damage stat than that. Because, you know, that's, bef that's just the base stat roll. That's before you even factor the actual items in. Um, so, like, if you started with a damage upgrade, for example, as one of your items, you would expect it to be a little bit higher. Um, but, again, maybe it's just observer bias. I'm just thinking about that room. Bro. Uh, well, there's something you can get to solve your rate of fire problems. I actually think we prefer Doctor's Remote to Mr. Boom. Look, soy milk is one of those things where you're like... Obviously... You, you don't like to see it for a couple of reasons. One is that damage stat is going to go to zero. The other one is honestly, I don't, I don't know if people even care about this sort of stuff anymore, but um, it, it's a special item. It's from the special item pool. It means you're less likely to see other special items for the remainder of the game, um, which is a real kick in the you-know-what, because other uh, special items actually tend to be good. We really... And I know it's, it's anti-Zane. We can't afford to go with um, soy milk when we also have Strange Attractor. It's just like, it's a non-starter. Like, um, uh, like, um, Jared Goff. Am I right, fellow Rams fans? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that much about football. I just, Jared Goff, I believe, is a... Is an NFL quarterback who is, uh, his job has been slightly in question recently, maybe? I don't know. It's, it's, it's all I got, though. Hold on. I, I am playing... Later today, I'm playing a Call of Duty Warzone charity tournament. Mostly because I'm so good at Call of Duty Warzone that, like, they specifically asked for me to be a ringer. Um, this is good, obviously. But I have a Discord message. I always got to check and see if the Discord message is from this. It is from this. Okay, hold on. We'll, we got a little check-in. Okay, no. It's, I, I'm... I'm being punctual is very important to me. We're still 56 minutes early for check-in, so I'm not sweating it. Okay, this sucks real bad. It wasn't just the telepills, it was the Are You a Wizard telepills, but it is what it is. But anyway, when Sinvicta and I were talking, you know, we talk about Isaac from time to time. Something we both know. And sometimes something we both... No! <laughs> if you catch my drift. But um, 
I really, I really feel like, I mean, I, I have two big problems with this game right now, and, you know, whether you actually, oh, thank God, whether you actually consider them big problems is up to you, and I do want to preface this by saying that I love Isaac, I think it's a, a fantastic game, it's one of my favorite games of all time, the more I play of it, the, the more two things uh, stand out to me, so we're, we're gonna get a little complainy here, and I apologize, but the two things that stand out to me, um, are item bloat and then Eden's bad stats and and you know the Eden stuff is very secondary you could just not play as Eden if you wanted to but um, so let's not even worry about that suffice it to say I believe in my opinion I think Eden's uh, tier and damage stat should be balanced slightly higher but the bigger problem is is item bloat in my opinion and it's not even like more items is kind of a good thing but there's so many items, particularly in my opinion, in uh, in both the boss I or in the in the item. Let me rephrase: in the boss item pool, that either do the exact same thing as other items or do nothing of value, like um, belly button, uh, dad's lost coin. Um, I forget what it's called, poly something, not polyphemus obviously, but the one that, like, you can hold two pills, you can hold two cards, like, th these are things that sound, like, somewhat useful when you start chunking your brain into it, you're like, oh, but then I could hold this card and this card, and then I could do this, so we can get this kind of synergy going, but in, in practice, I think, like, ten times out of ten, you'd rather just have stats. And the fact that the boss item pool is where you used to have the chance to get all the stats. And now so often you go in there. Like it used to be like pageant boy was like a kick in the face. Now when I get pageant boy, I'm like, dude, this actually like, th thank God at least it wasn't like, you know, something that does absolutely nothing for me. At least I can like use this to move the needle slightly. So that's my, my honest take on the subject is like, I love Isaac. This is all a consequence, or it, it adds to the worst consequence of where we're at in Isaac if you're a good player. And it, oh, <laughs> oh, man. Admittedly, you know, this is one of those things where you're like, yeah, if you know, if you watch the same movie 400 times, you're probably going to start to have problems with it, right? Um, by the way, I apologize for my bad dodges. I'm just going to offer in my own defense that, uh, I usually have slightly more time to dodge these enemies, but because of Strange Attractor, my timing's all messed up. But we're gonna we're gonna just start to play a little smarter, hopefully. Pretty fly. Pretty fly. Um the the main negative in Isaac right now is that the only time you lose is when the run is not fun. And I know how that sounds. It sounds like I've got it backwards. It sounds like what I mean to say is you only have fun when you're winning. That's not the case. This is really great. But at, at some point, if you're good enough at the game, and it's a hard problem to solve, right? But at some point, if you're good enough at the game, just about the only way you lose is when you find yourself starved of items that are that actually give you the ability to win. And that's just not fun, right? I'm, I'm a little embarrassed with my damage there, obviously, but... Um, that's not to say the game needs to be made easier. If anything, I think it just needs to be made harder, but in a different way than they've done it. Like, the way that Isaac is hard right now is essentially just... There's... The, the main thing you're fighting against from a difficulty standpoint is the fact that you could, you know, flip a coin eight times, get seven tails, and, and I'm using that as a metaphor for, like, you know, you, you had a 50-50 chance to get something useful. Seven times out of eight, you, you got something that's not useful at all, and all of a sudden you're on the womb with like one HP. And, you know, you're, you're taking 50 shots to kill basic enemies, and you're like, this isn't... Like, there's games where it's fun to lose, or it's fun even if you lose, I should say. Um, Isaac is in a weird spot right now where like, you know, like this, this is where we're at. This run is definitely losable, even though we got... Uh, a lot of good synergies for uh, Dark Bomb specifically here. Why is it losable? Because our damage stat was rolled terribly. And uh, on top of that, we also have one of the worst tier effect items in the game. So, like, I mean, I'm not belly aching about it. I, I think we're going to pull this one out one way or the other. And I think Isaac in general is a lot of fun. 
It's just the problem that like when you're winning, you're like, this is pretty cool. When you're losing, you're like, what? How did I get here? Not a secret room. Well worth it though. Anyway, just pop this down. I'm not trying to be like so negative about it. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm giving my two cents on where I end up on Isaac. Like if I seem salty on a losing Isaac run, I don't think I'm salty because I'm losing. Thank God. I also don't really think I'm losing because I'm salty. I think it's, I'm salty because I'm like getting items that essentially like at some point, Isaac, you can look at like a like a balance sheet, right? You can look at it and be like, oh, this is screwed. <laughs> so it's almost like I, I, I don't know. I don't know how you fix it. I don't know. And a lot of people probably would say it doesn't even need fixing. But certainly, like, man, oh, man. For the DLC to come out. Oh, baby. Can't wait. Even if it adds more items, at least it's like a momentary um, rush. You know what I mean? At least we can get some some temporary dopamine. This is this is horrible, man. The the rate of fire we have basically doubled since the start. That's good. We need long long term our health is probably fine. How did that hit like nothing? Long term our health is probably fine. Short term it's really not good. We could we could use a lot of money basically. Money to give us red hearts to give us uh, dark bomb plays to give us spirit hearts. But the the big problem is still that our damage stat is 2.63. <laughs> Which is uh something we're hoping to to get around. My, my lord, dude! I'm like... <laughs> okay, don't don't throw. Like, this is, this is a catastrophic, perfect storm in Isaac that you don't want to run into. A run where you've complained a lot, plus things are getting tough. Just take these guys one at a time. It doesn't take much... They're gonna split into two, so I'd rather like take them out last if possible. If we can get Dark Bum to maybe grab that, see what you got. No spiders, please. No, 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 nothing. Okay. I will say, you know, we got a solutions-focused community here. Um, I feel like one of the easiest ways to get around this issue would just be to stop playing as Eden for sure, or minimize it. I like Eden. I, I love the, the randomness, right? The only thing I dislike is like... Uh, everything being so variable. And I I do feel like this... You know, just because the scales aren't 50-50 doesn't mean they're not tilted in their own way. Oh my god, we did it. I do feel like the Eden starts are tilted to be worse than, than average. I think they'd... You know, they're, they're balanced around the... And uh, now I'm, like, becoming insufferable, I'll admit. Hey, talk about economics more. Hey, I said the word balance sheet. That's not enough for you? That's very good as well. Um, but I, I think they're balanced around, like... Hey, you're in the exact center of, like... Uh, Isaac's potential stat range. But, like, that's not actually that good. Because I feel like they did the math wrong. <laughs> or maybe you just noticed the worst ones more, but... I don't know. I, when I think about it, I'm like, nah, I'm pretty sure they, something's wrong with the, the calculation. Maybe, maybe I'm, you know, what do I know? I'm, I'm an entertainer, and it's only entertainment. But I, I will say the number of times we seem to find ourselves in a, in a situation similar to this is... Uh, it's not the best. It's not the best. And we're, we're just bleeding HP here. You know, we, like, we gotta stop shooting. Because if we keep shooting, then the enemies get a speed bonus and they crush me. If we stop shooting, though, they'll never die. So what do you want to do here? I don't know. I don't know, I was hoping like maybe at some point we could get a damage upgrade. Oh, sorry, we're all out of damage upgrades. Here's two magnets. 
Thanks, game. Thanks. Really appreciate it. And I will say, you couldn't really ask for a better run to like be your case study. We have such incredible defensive ability on this run. And yet still, the defensive ability is basically only allowing us to stay at survival rations. Like, I'm, I'm now playing it forward in my head, and I'm like... How long is this run gonna be, dude? <laughs> how, how many Isaac runs have to cause me to not be able to have a lunchtime? I'm just uh, Isaac. If you're on an audition right now, we're we're really hoping we get like I'm I'm not afraid to fight the fallen. But just give me mom's knife. Oh, uh, we can't because you saw soy milk earlier. It's okay. We're gonna pull out of it. We're we're gonna get ourselves out of this mess. How do you get yourself out of a jailhouse made of cake? One bite at a time. No items there. That's fine. I don't deserve them. No, no consumables? Sure, who needs them? Okay, step one. 17 bites. On each turret in order to have a chance to slowly wipe them. Keep it going, keep it going. Hey, look at that, look at that, dark bomb. Look at that, look at that. Knock him onto the spikes, please. Hey, look, am, I, am I crazy or are we starting to do like average first floor damage on the fourth floor, dude? Am I crazy? Am I crazy? Feel like we're starting we're starting to get this one together. Bad start, bad start. I really I do and I don't want to go to this curse room. It's kind of an obvious do, and then there's an obvious don't. The obvious do is we need anything, especially like a teleportation to the Well, I, now that I think about it, like a teleportation to the deal with the devil actually kind of stinks. This is this is a good time. Cuz we don't have any HP anyway. Could this be a secret room? Nope. All right. Um let's keep it moving. This is a great room for this at least. If we could get 9 volt, I would I would stop complaining for 4 seconds. I promise you that. 9 volt would be enough. To be able to use Doctor's Remote once per room. Dude, and also, like, there's so many little reasons we're alive right now. Dark Bum, Bloody Penny, uh, obviously are big ones. Two good pills, or, or three good Balls of Steel pills. A random Hierophant card. Um, but also just, like, having two Pretty Flies. Has completely changed the dynamic for us. This is this is a, a mess, dude. We've been on this floor for like nine minutes. <laughs> okay, Joker. That was an important one. That's a, and you know what? That's probably another Joker, um, which is tempting. We're gonna leave it for now. The thing is, you know, we're so stoked to have the Joker card, but we need to, we could buy one, like we could use this one, and then hope that it leads to um, a deal with the devil that we can afford. That actually provides us with some value as well. And then hopefully get one for the next floor too. Alternatively, we could s get some money to buy some spirit hearts on this floor. You got me. Yeah, you, got, you got me. Um, like, okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, very important. And then maybe, just maybe, something in... I, <laughs> <laughs> Think you gotta you gotta try the telepills. We're not gonna try it here because we, we got like a good lead on this right now. This is this is a disheartening run. I still think like an Isaac pity timer is like I I don't want to be given a win every single time. I do feel like if every every boss room you go to that doesn't pay out with an item that gives you some good stats. 
Just checking. Um, should actually come with like, uh, like a plus seven percent chance to get better stats or to get to get a stats item on your next boss room. <laughs> Even if some of the stats are like you know shot speed. Anyway, I I like this is recorded right after the last episode. I'm not like in a bad mood. I'm having a great day so far. But I am also just hopeful that maybe in this item... You know, we had Polyphemus on our last run. Maybe it could show up in here. You know what? I'm not going to be overly negative about uh, about this. Just let me in. Thank you. I think we should hold the Joker card for sure. And then we'll, we'll see where it goes. We'll see where it goes from here. It's Rom Mega. He gets creamed by this in not so many words. Certainly, like, we need damage. If we could just get, like, Dark Judas or something. I say just as if that wouldn't be, like, a, a huge get for us. But, like, I'm just saying, like, doesn't have to be 17 different good deals with the devil. We just, Like, there are one item solutions. Abaddon is pretty good for us. Yeah, that's that's not one of them. Um, so I think we, we sort of have to... Lean in hard on this floor. So this is... Come on, come on, come on. Wait, I knew we weren't going to get a payout there. It's a little early, but... I think we have to buy a Spirit Heart. Use the Joker card. Is Krampus. But this is okay. Because then if we don't take damage, which is... So, like, we can still buy a Joker card for our next floor. Is what I'm getting at. I'm like, I'm, I'm devoid of... I'm, I'm like, I've got no Turger pressure right now. You know what I mean? There we go. Okay, that's, there's some decency there. I'm like, how am I going to keep any dialogue going for the next 80 minutes until this runs over, dude? Okay, it's Ace of Hearts after all that. It's an Ace of Hearts. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Just, it just hidden buttons. It's like the one time it's not the same freaking item. Okay, let me out. I got I to gotta take a look at the Discord here again. Let's see what's going on. Let's see what's going on. Another message. New mentions. Oh my. It's a very it's a very long message. Okay. We'll do we'll deal with that after. Um let's see what we got. You know? You know that's pretty good. You're a real son of a gun, but but I'll take it. Now, we have a pretty good rate of fire. You could do a lot worse on the item front than getting a lump of coal. Man, I can't believe I've been playing this game for so long that we, every time we got lump of coal, we used to make a reference to Rust Coal, the um, character played by Matthew McConaughey on season one of the HBO television program True Detective. Like we, we've been we've been around a long time, huh? I haven't watched the other seasons of True Detective. Um, I heard season two was okay, but kind of a letdown. I think, for me, Fargo has taken the spot. Is this like... The the theme of this run is palette swapped items? I haven't seen Fargo Season 3 yet. But Fargo Season... Season 2 is great. The longer that I, I think about it, the more I'm like, you know, I think Season 2 is like more solid overall but Billy Bob Thornton's uh, portrayal of Lee Malvo is just one of those all time like television greats I gotta go to that I got I lean on that as as the reason for that being so good that was fun we talked about things that were not related to this run or the Isaac Meta for a little bit. That was cool. That's like what I want to do more of. I would be it would be easier if I could get a damage upgrade. Please. Please. I did what you asked. Now give me my damage ups. With the worst I I can't even begin to tell you psychologically where I'll be at if uh 
we get a deal with the devil, but we still only have three spirit hearts, so we can't finish the job. Like, we can't actually... Oh, there's a double tinted rock in there! Four spirit hearts. I'm begging. I'm begging you. It's, it's a huge play right now. Anyway, what was I talking about? Fargo. Yeah, I haven't been watching a lot of TV lately. Most of the TV I watch is legitimately at like... Like 5 in the morning. Like this morning I got up at... This morning I got up at uh, 4... 45 because <laughs> the baby was crying you know and you get up you feed the baby and then when I fed her you know she had a big smile on her face and I was like this is sick it was a fun time then I went back to bed it wasn't that bad but like the, you know if you're talking about good TV there's not a whole lot of it at um, you know 4 45 a.m. no no television network is running like their best programming at the crack of dawn. I just used that by accident. I apologize. But I think you want to... Okay, this is so freaking huge. We want to have you split. Blow you up. Enormous. Actually enormous. Not a good item. Has to be perthrowed. An actually good item. And that was trash anyway. So we're moving on. Oh my god, we actually have, like, some kind of damage now. It's still pretty bad, and the fact that it comes with a, a rate of fire uh, decrease is a little bit of a slap in the face. But on the other hand, at least... <laughs> at least... I mean, it has a huge um, mass effect, right? Like, the fact that we have, and, and we gotta open all of these, because we, we need everything we can get from uh, Dark Bum here. The fact that it has piercing shots is like an enormous, not mass effect, sorry, force multiplier. Okay, so you're you're in luck, because like, we'll probably be able to be a lot less complainy soon. Even though we got paid out with a spider there, see, we're not sweating it. Uh, we're also not doing that. But, like, this is now a run where, like, I don't, I don't ask for much, you know? Even our stats on this run are kind of not that good. I am also, I can now switch to, like, being a little bit more mindful and, and grateful and appreciative. I'm now very thankful to this run for having, you know, given me so many balls of steel to allow me to live. Thank you for being fun so I could show people how fun you are. In some circumstances. Now we can banter a little bit. In in some ways. <laughs> that I That's a good enemy. The fact that he teleports creep on top of you. I'm I'm actually being genuine. I'm not like I, I think that's a I'm not upset. I know it sounds like something that someone who is upset would say. I'm not upset. You know what I watched the other day? So I referenced it. It's, it's been in the lexicon of references for a long time. There's a classic YouTube video from 2007 called Shoes. And it's like, it's a sketch comedy music video. Um, and, you know, it was kind of like part of YouTube, you know, 0 0.05. Like, before YouTube had any sort of, you know, nobody knew what it was. Is this a place where you just post video messages that, like, you know, you want your grandma to see? Is this a place where you you do blah, blah, blah? You know, you get the idea. You know, do I just post videos of my trip to the zoo? Um, and it's... Uh, or, or is it going to be like the next big... Who knows, you know? Turns out the answer was somewhere in the middle, I suppose. Either way, as the video is called Let's Get Some Shoes. Um, I, I had watched it, uh, you know, 12 years ago, 13 years ago. Um, and it was, it was a viral video classic. If you ask people who were on YouTube at the time, you know, it's got 60-something million views. They'll, they'll probably have seen shoes. It's no Gangnam style, but, you know, it's a big video. Um, why not? I think we don't want that. I think we're very happy where we stand. We'll just take one of these and move on. But, uh, I, I thought I was kind of like one of those videos that is very... Uh, I would look back and be like, this isn't that funny. And lo and behold, when I went back and watched it, 
because I, I had referenced it and then somebody referenced it to me. Um, I was actually, believe it or not, you know, with the benefit of 10 years, 13 years, I actually think it's aged well. I, th I think comedy has moved in a more shoes direction. Where, where stuff like that, that that is a little bit subversive is is actually more appreciated now. Back then, it was like, lol, so random, holds up Spork, I am to Penguin of Doom, right? You're like, oh, the video's so random. Now you're like, oh, it subverts your expectations. The joke is that it is a joke, you know? It's, it's almost like academic. I'm not saying it's the highest concept comedy out there. You know what? Screw you. <laughs> I bet there was something good in there, but screw you. I'm not I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. It's funny how things change, right? Like I remember like uh like 7 years ago Dennis Miller, the former weekend update uh and turned conservative comedian, um did an AMA, and uh, the AMA got raided by Tim Heidecker from Tim and Eric. Uh, like on his podcast, he told people, you know, hey, Tim, come on, man, it's against reticate. Not cool, bro. But um, he told people, like, hey, go, go and post questions to Dennis Miller, because, uh, you know, I think he's kind of a hack. And so many people in the thread were like, I've never heard of this Tim guy, but... You know, just from the way that he carries himself, I think he's just jealous of a cerebral comedian like you, Dennis. And now, like, it's funny, not that not that Tim and Eric were unknown back then, but it's funny that, like, Tim and Eric's comedy has become pretty influential and, you know, the, the kind of off-kilter alt-comedy is, is kind of in, if that makes sense. Whereas Dennis Miller's, like, you know... Hyper literal, like, I don't want to go off on a rant here, but does anybody think that the IPO of Antibi Therapeutics uh, makes Sisyphus pushing a rock up the mountain look like Cassandra after the Siege of Troy? Like, you're just, you look at stuff like that and you're like, why are you trying so hard, bro? Like, the fact, like, your joke might have a funny premise, but the fact that it clearly took you, uh, you know, like, in the writer's room, you were like, let's add some footnotes to this. Like, what did that joke take? Like, 17 hours to actually craft and source? Like, it's embarrassing. But definitely, like, some things have aged poorly. Like, either they're in poorer taste now, but they use uh, words that are, you know, considered not, you know, acceptable to use anymore. And that you always makes you go a little bit like, hey. But, um, we want to hold the era here, of course. Um... But then the flip side of that is that, you know, th things change in the opposite direction, too. Some things that you thought were, like, you know, maybe, like, 6 out of 10 viral videos in the year 2007 look a little bit more like 8s or 9s in, in light of, you know, changed in modern tastes. You hear about a lot of things that have aged poorly. Very rarely do people talk about things that have aged well, unless they're people. You don't hear, like, you always hear, ooh, that movie aged poorly. Yeah, I get it, that's Kevin Spacey in it. Of course it aged poorly. We didn't know in 1998, okay? We didn't know, and I, I was 10 years old. I didn't know when I thought American Beauty was kind of like a movie that was, uh, uh, it had a soul-stirring message at some point. I didn't realize that at some point Kevin Spacey was going to be like, yeah, I suck, <laughs> Okay. People, by the way, they get way too... Well, you didn't know America. He falls in love with the, uh, you know, his daughter's high school friend. No, he gets infatuated with his daughter's high school friend. And at no point in the movie do you... Well, at least it's one of those, like, Fight Club, Wolf of Wall Street things. If you watch the movie and you're like, bro, Lester Burnham's sick. Like, the way that he, like, abandons his family. In, but it, even then, it's not like, like, in the pursuit of... It, it's hard to explain, Okay. I don't absolve the character of Lester Burnham for his infatuation with uh, a high school crush. However, it, it, the part of the movie, without spoiling it for you, is that he realizes that, like, the thing that he's built up in his head to be, like, this, uh, you know, the the pinnacle of uh, the zenith of his accomplishment, when he actually gets close enough to realize it, he realizes that he's actually a creepazoid. And then, like, that's kind of, like, the point, is that he's... He's he self defeats himself in in almost a virtuous way at the end of it, despite the actor that played him. Okay. 
I didn't, I don't know. Like at some point, we we crossed the line, in my opinion, with movies. We got a little bit too far. People would be like, uh, you know, you like that movie, but there's like a bad guy in it. I don't even mean the actor. I mean like, you know, you like uh, oh, you like Infinity War? Uh, you you thought it was cool when Thanos said he wanted to wipe out half the universe? No. Well, I mean, I, I guess I thought it was cool, but I wasn't like, go Thanos, you know? Top level, you know? I, I was, you know, it's just he's a villain, you know? If I wanted to watch a movie where people didn't do anything, I'd watch Dan in real life. Not the man, Dan. It's a joke because he really likes the movie. Anyway, long story short. I don't know what our HP is at. I don't I don't care. We're, we're taking this one through to its... It's logical conclusion. What's better, Yera or Black Rune? I don't know why I'm holding Black Rune now that I think about it. <laughs> I thought I would use it on an I guess if we got a deal with the devil here, we could use it. I don't think I... Oh, we can't afford it. We can afford it, dude. And we want to afford it. I forgot we had one full red heart. So we wanted to use Black Rune to kind of get... Uh, uh, stats, but there's no stats to be gleaned. Don't be mad. We're just gonna let this one roll. Like, I know we could blow this up and get some HP. Because we could get Lucky Rock, blow it up, pick it up with Bloody Penny. Get a bunch of Red Hearts, turn them into Spirit Hearts. If that ends up being the reason we don't win this run, then so be it. I will blame myself. I didn't realize our HP was so good, actually. Alright. So this is a very, this is a classic Isaac situation. Now the run is good enough that if you zo zoned out for half of it, you would be like... Why was he complaining? Really? I mean, it's still not that good. <laughs> 4.98 damage. Combined with, uh, let's not forget, 9 rate of fire. Pre that's pretty good, NL. Yeah. Pretty good uh, for me to poop on. <laughs> remember that? Dude, you guys remember Ed the Sock? He's he's a Canadian puppet that, like, I don't mean, like, no puppet, you're the puppet. I mean, like, he's literally, like, a sock that people put their hands in and then go, meow, 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 you know? Like a puppet puppet. Um, anyway, so I hadn't thought about Ed the Sock for a while, but because I did that tweet with, uh, or I did that stream with... Jugmeet Singh and uh, AOC and, and so on and so forth. Like, I got a lot of... It's just... It gave me an appreciation to some extent for what po uh, politicians get in their mentions at all times. Like, I would be tagged in a tweet that Jugmeet Singh made where he's like, Hey, I'm going to be playing Among Us on Twitch tonight. It would be like, people with like 40,000 followers would reply like, Yet another waste of taxpayers' money. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so on Twitch, dummy is free. Anyway, Ed the Sock was in there. I don't know. He made a, he made a jab at Jugmeet Singh's uh, expense, which I'm sure bothered him a lot. Um, and I was like, what what happened? Like, I'm not. <laughs> you you have the right to be political on Twitter. Don't get me wrong, but like, at least take me out of the tweet. It just makes you look like you're four thousand years old. Like, if somebody adds six people in a tweet, and then you specifically want to direct a message of derision to one of them, take the other five people out of your tweet. Or your reply, I should say. It, it's, it's considered common courtesy and politeness. I don't care if you're a sock that smokes a cigar. Like, have some manners, okay? This is a real thing, by the way. This, it might sound like this is all fictional, made-up... Fairy tale land. This, this is real. This, this is 2020. I'm getting side tweeted by by an angry puppet <laughs> for playing video games with a, with a Canadian politician. What? Where did we go wrong, man? Where did the, where, where did the rails bend? We built them with inferior steel, and now the train's coming off the track. Elon, turn this reset the simulation. Elon, it's broken. All right, this is really highlighting our our poor damage, but it's okay. But I am like about half a microsecond away from just walking into him and letting the demon hearts do the rest. It's 
Squam. 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 I, I'm sorry, okay? Like, but there's nothing to say. There's nothing to say. <laughs> Alright, Yeremi, please. Yeremi, stats and class again. Uh, okay. Very good. Good, but a little dangerous, maybe. Um, actually might cost us the run, but alternatively might give us the greatest one we've ever asked for. Unicorn Stump is really good if we just had one real orbital. So the only thing I'll say right now is I'm a little apprehensive. So I feel like maybe um, we need... Bro. This is like surprisingly slow. Um, but I'm thinking like maybe we need uh, HP now because Brittle Bones, is that the one that takes all of our HP? I think Daddy Longlegs did literally like 99% of the damage in there. I think my my range and shot speed are actually too high. <laughs> Alright. Enemies of temporary invincibility. There we go. Thank you. Oh, no, no, no. It didn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Alright. So after, after all of my complaining and belly aching, it does appear... We're going to come out of this run looking pretty decent. Do I regret my complaining? No, I, if anything, I actually think that this was a great run uh, to illustrate the reasons for my complaints. You know, I'm not trying to be a negative guy or anything like that, but, you know, it was not a... Uh, like, the start of this run was not fun. You may ask yourself, why would I pick that up? <laughs> I think you got a very valid uh, question there. It's not to say I don't have fun with Isaac. It's merely to say that, like, to be honest, I hope that Isaac... Like, I hope the DLC does something to mitigate the, this issue. Maybe you don't see it as an issue. Maybe it's just a me thing and a Sinvicta thing. But... It's more of... Is more of an Eden issue. Like, that's why Isaac's such a good character, man. Because if you get crap in the boss room, at least you got a chance to roll out of it, right? Why would I do this when we know that there's the boss fight right there? Eh, whatever. Whatever. We're, we're fine. Like, we're not going to lose. But just the principle of the thing. Anyway. we I, There were multiple times during this run where I thought for sure that we were going to go back to zero, um, which would have been very disheartening. Instead, I'm going to comfort myself with a little bit of statistical... Uh, well, it's just not statistically valid, but I'm going to use it as a moment of comfort. Let's call it statistical superstition. Certainly, having won this one, our next run can't be this bad, right? We're, we're due for one that's, that's going to be a little bit more of a stop or a steamroll, and that's exciting. I'm happy for that. For now, though, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. And, of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching. I apologize to Ed the Sock, and I'll see you next time. See ya!